that an order in express terms to annihilate, to kill the survivors of a ship that is sunk would be an appalling order to give. I have already stated that the attacks on survivors were contrary to a soldier's idea of fair fighting and that I have never put my name to any order which could in the slightest degree lead to anything of the kind, not even when it was proposed to me as a reprisal measure. If it was given in express terms, annihilate survivors after you sink a ship, you know your officers, would there at Tenerite have been some danger that some of them would have refused to carry out that order? Yes, as I know my U-boat forces, there would have been a storm of indignation against such an order. The clean and honest idealism of these men would never have allowed them to do it. And I would never have given such an order or permitted it to be given. Working to save his client's life, defense lawyer Otto Kronzbühler came up with a brilliant strategy. Now, he was forbidden by the court's rules from claiming that Dönitz could not be punished because the Allies had committed the same illegal acts he had. So Kronzbühler's strategy was to show that Dönitz and the Allies conducted war the same way and that what both had done was legal. To prove his case, Kronzbühler asked Admiral Chester Nimitz, head of the U.S. Pacific Fleet, to confirm that the Americans and Germans had played by the same rules. And to the surprise of many, Nimitz sent back answers to questions called interrogatories that show just that. The, the tribunal would like to have the document read, uh, Dr. Penzbüller. At the request of the International Military Tribunal, the following, following interrogatories were on this date, 11 May 1940, put to Fleet Admiral Chester W. Nimitz United uh, you States. must have given the date wrong, I think. 1946, isn't it? The 11 May 1946. Yes. Admiral Nimitz was duly sworn by Lieutenant Commander Broderick and interrogated as follows. What's your name, rank, and present station? Answer. Chester W. Nimitz, Fleet Admiral, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations of the United States Navy. Question. What positions in the United States Navy did you hold from December 1941 until May 1945? Answer. Commander-in-Chief, United States Pacific Fleet. Question. Did the United States of America, in her sea warfare against Japan, announce certain waters to be areas of operation, blockade, danger, restriction, warning, or the like? Answer. Yes. For the purpose of command of operations against Japan, the Pacific Ocean areas were declared a theater of operations. <coughs> Question. If yes, was it customary in such areas for submarines to attack merchantmen without warning with the except, exception of her own and those of her allies. Answer, yes. With the exception of hospital ships and other vessels under safe conduct, voyages for humanitarian purposes. Question, were you under orders to do so? Answer, 
the Chief of Naval Operations on 7 December 1941 ordered unrestricted submarine warfare against Japan. Question. Where, by order or on general principles, the United States submarines prohibited from carrying out rescue measures <coughs> toward passengers and crews of ships sunk without warning. In those cases, where by doing so, the safety of the own boat was endangered. <coughs> Answer. On general principles, the United States submarines did not rescue enemy survivors if undue additional hazard to the submarine resulted, or the submarine would thereby be prevented from accomplishing its further mission. That same Otto Kronzbühler, 50 years later, told Court TV's Terry Moran about how and why he contacted Admiral Nimitz for the Dönitz case. The commander of the sinking U of the U-boat uh, made a call, an open call, uh, by wireless to bring along other boats, U-boats, and even. Uh, Put a, a French friendship to save the uh, survivors, mm. and in that situation, the uh, saving boats were attacked by an American bomber and had damage. That was the reason why Dönitz prohibited uh, saving uh, survivors by endangering the boat. And as part of this defense, you got in contact with the American naval hero, Admiral Nimitz. Why? Well, uh, it was rather a coincidence. I, at the American Library, I got a little pocketbook about the Pacific War. And I read it, and uh, of course I had the idea, well, it did exactly what we had done. And, uh, I discussed it with Dönitz, and he, he was enthusiastic about it. And then we made this questionnaire, which we asked Dönitz to answer. But it wasn't as easy. Uh, there was, of course, strong opposition by the prosecution. And typical for Nuremberg, there was not a discussion in open court, things like that were handled in private, in camera. There was a session only with the judges, prosecutors, and me. And then I had to fend my uh, wishes and was attacked by Sir David Maxwell Five, who did say, well, we have here German criminals, the American Navy has nothing to do with it, and all of that. But uh, the judge who really supported me was Biddle, the American judge, who insisted that this questionnaire was given to Admiral Nemes. And of course, it was a big success to have it answered the way it was. Were you surprised at the way Admiral Nimitz answered? No, no. I expected it. I, I, any, any Admiral in the Navy would have done the same. 